<laughs> they've got the ability and the capabilities of doing it, but they. You can't say they're not getting a certain amount of luck as well. What By the need. way, we need to return to the fact that West Ham now officially can't qualify for the Champions League. That was your, I that was your surprise. I tell you, they, they came close, though. Yeah. They did, they did. I'm, I'm, I'm devastated, actually. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I look, the Everton result, I'm in the press box and everyone's typing away and they're getting chances. I'm going, go on, go on. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Nearly there, nearly there. But look, it just opens everything up for the final day. It's going down to the wire. Everything, the title's decided, relegation has been decided for a while now. This race for the top four is going to be where all the focus is, and there's hardly anything in it. There's pretty much nothing in it. I think mm. it's, it's amazing to see, actually, with the teams that have to play each other and people's opinions, like my opinion with Chelsea versus Villa, I feel like Villa might get something there, and then it all falls on whether the Leicester and Liverpool do what they need to do. So it, it's making for an interesting stand and a lead to the end of the season. But it's also nice to see that it's happening in that position rather than the relegation or the top half of the table. So it shows how compact the league is actually getting for European places. Do you know what's key about that as well? I mean, the, when you consider how quickly the relegation places were decided mm. and how quickly the league was decided as well, and all of us thought, well, maybe we're going to get to the end of the season with you know, nothing really in it. And then you look at second to sixth and you realise it's going to be a very dramatic day. You know, when you, when you do look at the, the top four, though, with the season that it looked like Everton were going to have, Leicester, magnificent. If they miss out on the top four, it will be a shame for them. When you look at those... West Ham. West Ham as well, so I can't, I can't forget West Ham. But then you see the four teams that are in there now, and that's, that's, what, I, that's what it comes down to as well, the quality and the capability of those teams to find something at this end of the season when it's needed the most. This is why I, I couldn't write Liverpool off, even though it was, it was something where you think to yourself, well, the defending, of course, it's, they, they lost a lot of defenders with the, the injuries and then the forwards are not firing, but them top teams, man, they find it when they need to, and that's, what, that's, that's what's happened. If Leicester don't make it, do we have to ask questions about them, given that they fell away so rapidly last season? They will have fallen away this season. And even though they've won the FA Cup, and you can't find a Leicester fan who'd say, we'd swap that for Champions League qualification, yeah. what, you know, their first FA Cup in their, in their history. But do we ask questions about their um, stamina across the season, even in this weird season as well? Um, I think it'd be unfair, but because of what happened last season and it's happening this season, the thing with last season to this is that obviously they've, they've won an FA Cup final. That can do something to your your psyche, your, your preparation and everything. To have something as, as important to Leicester and Brendan Rodgers as finishing fourth, um, but then winning the, 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 the FA Cup as well, that's going to be quite confusing to what you're trying to do, to try and then find it. When you already failed last season in the way they did fail, the way they fell away, that's something that's going to be in your mind. Um, I do feel for them because I feel like if they did... If they lost the cup final, maybe it might have been the Philip to give them that boost and the blast to finish it off, to finish off um, trying to get into the top four because the way they stayed in for the whole season... You don't get what you deserve in this league. It's too tough, but they do deserve something. And then the questions will be asked about their mentality if they don't do it again this season. And particularly because they've spent so long inside yeah. the top four, more than any, any other side. It's been... Is it, it's been a, let's say, patchy, it's been a patchy season for, for everybody, even for Manchester City, yeah. up to, to sort of November, November December yeah. time. And then ki they kicked on, which is why they haven't spent as many days inside the, the top four. But it, it just... They, they've had it in their hands since day one. Um, yeah, I have to agree with you, but the one thing I have noticed, they've stayed in it a lot longer, but they've had a lot of massive injuries as well and they've still managed to keep up with the pace and it's gone down to the last day i think the game against chelsea chelsea came out the, the traps flying with pressure they missed a lot of chances but even with we say leicester not playing too well they still could have drawn the game at the end of it so you can still see the fights there which is going to make an interesting last day of the season i think like we're talking about liverpool with the luck and with leicester i believe so when you look back at that game, Darren, and you, the chance that Jose Perez had, you, you just can't miss that chance. Yeah. Not when they're going for what they're going for. Coming off of winning the cup, <clears> they must have been in such a weird place in respect of their mentality and psyche for the game. But they'd just done enough to get that point 
You know, and that is the difference again between someone like Yazi Perez. The chance was so good, he just leaned back over the bar. And you look at the goals that they conceded mm -hmm. and how easy they um, conceded those goals. When you saw how they played in the cup final, you think to yourself, their, their minds are not on it properly. Mm -hmm. They're just not on it because the, the goal from the corner and then the Yazi Perez miss, it was just like, I, I really felt, I felt for Brendan Rodgers because what he's done since he's been there is it's magnificent. And I think that the, the performances up to this point, they deserve to be in there. But you can't get in there when you're, you're, you're making mistakes like they did, that, missing chances like they did. Yeah, in terms of trying to predict it, we're just looking at the, the run of Forbes for, for all the teams who are going to be involved on the final day of the season. Still not beyond the realms of possibility, as, as we looked at earlier, that Chelsea could, could drop out. Because Sean was saying, they, you know, Aston Villa could maybe get something against them. You know, it's interesting with Chelsea because <clears throat> on form, and we've talked about it many times on this show before, you would suggest that they would be in pole position to nail it down, but they've lost at times this season when you wouldn't expect it. Um, and they were held... Uh, I think they lost to Wolves, didn't they? Mm. And they lost to Arsenal when we expected them to beat them. Mm. That and was the one under Tuchel, wasn't it? That, yeah, was, that yeah. was the big one. Yeah. And the interesting thing about this game for me is that I don't know which Chelsea's going to turn up. For the first time since he's the defensively strong Chelsea or the Chelsea that wobbled and, and, and surrendered, if you like, mm. against a fragile Arsenal team. And the, the other interesting thing about the Chelsea team is that their top scorer this season is Jorginho with seven goals. Wow. That is a damning indictment mm. of a team. And on all penalties. Yeah. All penalties, exactly. So that's the other thing that says to me, can they go to Villa, who've got nothing to play for, can score goals, and win. I'm not so sure. Liverpool, four in a row, unbeaten in their last nine. They're in fantastic form. They're at home to Palace. You'd put your money on them to win. Leicester, OK, they've won three of their last six, mm. but they're up against this Tottenham side that have disintegrated. Yeah. Mm. The morale is poor. They can't defend to save their lives. I think the four of us could probably defend better than Spurs <laughs> yeah, at the moment. Oh, you so say you... that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I play centre off. Kelly can play left-back. She'll do right. Back, right? <laughs> I don't run. Do you, you don't need to run, Kel. You don't Nor do to... they. <laughs> you know the thing with Tottenham... You, it's interesting with, with Spurs, Darren, because... And Leicester... I, be, I believe that Leicester will beat them. Um, and it's, it's down to Liverpool to beat Palace. It's, and it's in Liverpool's hands. That's the thing. If Liverpool win with the goal well, difference... Well, it is and it isn't. Right. In, in, in that it's kind of in Liverpool's hand and it's in Leicester's hands right. because it might come down to goal difference. So they are both responsible so for how many Leicester, goals they Leicester score. Leicester scoring like five and that against... Well, this is, this is the point. Right? Yeah, so in... Yes, technically, mm -hmm. it's, it's more in, in Liverpool's hands. But because it comes down to goals scored and because both sides are essentially in control of that, yeah. it's kind of in both their hands. It, I mean, it's literally, I'm just being petty and small here. <laughs> but it's a, but it, is, it is a small point. But yeah, it, because their level on points in Liverpool's goal differences is far better. You, you just have to look at Liverpool with, with the way the season's gone. And it's, it's literally something to hold on to for them. Something. And also because you look at the game against Burnley mm. last night and for Liverpool to win that by three goals to nil. And like you said, Burnley were resolute in, yeah. in that game. They made it really difficult for Liverpool. Yeah. So those three goals could be hugely Massive. significant come Absolutely. Sunday. Absolutely. And they are not only the, the, the three goals, but the identities of the scorers as well. Yeah. Firmino scoring this goal here, for me, is quite key because... He scored now in each of his last three games. Before that, he'd scored once in 23 matches. Mm. Wow. But he seems to be catching fire at exactly the right time for Liverpool. Well, this is what you're saying. It's like the same thing like what you say, Darren, when I said about Jose Perez and what you need to do at this stage. Yeah. And that's a quality player what has got a lot of stick this season for, for not scoring goals. But if we're going to look at the goals he's scored in the last few games, they're arguably the most important goals for Liverpool this season, if we're going to be totally honest with the way it's gone. Yeah. So that's what you want, a player that comes to the fore when you need them to, and that is why you have to fancy Liverpool. Talking yeah. of players who come to the fore when they're needed, mm. Nat Phillips with this one, his first ever senior goal. I've and obviously I've... it's a header, yes. obviously it's a header, that's, <laughs> that's what he does. It's very, it's, it's, it's see him just ambling in, in a, to a Burnley defence with no one close enough. Look at Ben and. They're just not, not close enough to a player like that who, for me, in respect of a heading display in a game, it was one of the best I've ever seen. But he's got so much on that. He's had the time to get up and really attack it. It's a fantastic header. I'm just very surprised 
that Burnley gave him that much time and space to be able to, to head it in like that. But you have to give Mane credit for getting that cross in in such a tight area. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at him in, in a bit more mm. detail later on because it, it, was a, it was a great game for him and he's been so important to Liverpool. They lost their three first-choice centre-backs yeah. across the, the course of, of this season. But making it 3-0 and seeing the return to fitness and it looks like the return to, to some kind of form in that, that brief appearance that he made for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. It's great to see the, the Ox back, it's, especially with this play here. Thiago, obviously, he's involved with a lot of the stuff, but the way he goes to shoot and changes halfway through it, and then the, the quick burst of pace to get it out of his face and space, and such a cre clean strike yeah. with his left foot, because that's not his natural foot, but he mm. hits it so naturally with the laces that it's, it's hard for the keeper to stop through yeah. all those bodies. He looks really, he looks really sharp. It's yeah. really good to see because you can see that he's a player when you look at the other players in the, in the Liverpool midfield, and what, he's, he's, he's the kind of player that they need more, so need in there as well, if they can get him to, to, to get him to fit and playing, because he's got so much to offer. He's a, he's, I think he's a player whose reputation at Liverpool is, is sort of, he is underrated in yeah. terms of his, his time spent there. Because I remember when he got injured, yeah. the game against Manchester City in the Champions League, the first yeah. big injury that he had, and, Liverpool fans were genuinely concerned, concerned as to how the team would, would fare without him. And mm -hmm. I think since then, he's necessarily sort of been on the fringes because he's, he's spent a lot of that time injured. Yes, and you can see why Liverpool got him in the first because he's, he, he's, he, can, he can get forward and he can progress the ball. He can run with the ball as well as get into the box and do skills like this. And that is what you look at the rest of the Liverpool midfielders. And not many of them do that. You know, um, they don't do what he does. So, like I said, if, they can, if he can stay fit and Liverpool can get firing again, get their defenders back, get that solid, the solidity back, what they had before, he can easily get in that side. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he, how he sort of comes yeah. back to fitness and he'll have the, the summer, unless he gets a call-up for the Euros. Um, that would be, that, be a massive surprise. Um, and I'm sure it would be a And anyway, for time better spent getting Maybe back get, to full get, fitness. And he's, yeah, he's been out for a while. His, his form's just coming back. You know, it, it might be... I, I, you know something, you just said it, I'm now I'm thinking, can he be in there? <laughs> <laughs> now there's 26. This is like my okay. 42nd player yeah. I'm getting into the squad, but like, it, it would be a massive surprise if he did. Yeah. They, so it, just, I mean, with Liverpool, what is quite interesting is that there are doubts over some players. Obviously, Van Dijk won't go mm. because we know he's been injured all season. But there is that doubt over Trent Alexander-Arnold. Whatever we think of it, if he doesn't go, I would imagine Jurgen Klopp will be delighted. Yeah. If they don't take players to the Euros, Great, knock yourself out, mm. you cope with what you've got. My players will have a rest and then next season will go again. And I definitely believe they'll be in the hunt for the title next season. Mm. It, yeah, you look at the, at the way that they've mentioned Van Dijk there, the fact that he said he, he doesn't want to go with the, mm. the Netherlands, he wants to make sure that he's, he's yeah. up and, and firing. Um, you look at, at the performance of, of Nat Phillips in that game. Yeah. I said we were going to come back. It's something that, that Liverpool fans have been sort of experiencing over the last few, over that run that, that Darren was talking about where he just seems to get his head on, on everything. I was watching, Michael Richards was, was talking about him yeah. and saying, it, it's all well and good saying he's just heading the ball, but in the same way that it's a striker just striking the ball to, to score a goal, yeah. he's, it's his positioning. Is that exactly what it is. You know, it's not like when they say, oh, a striker's in there, and he says, yeah, but he's, 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 he's lucky to be in there at the right... Your experience um, as a defender and as a striker takes you to the places where you feel... Look at this for danger. He instantly feels where the danger is once the ball's gone over his head. His natural reaction is to get on the line. He's done it brilliantly. And again, you look at where he is all the time. He's in, the, he's in a position where he knows that's where the danger is. You know what I mean? He's there to block it out. And, you know, he, he went up the other end and scored a goal. It was f fantastic. He said after the game that clearance off the line was better than the goal. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it I was. would say that as well. But um, for me, I think the thing I noticed about him more, especially in that game, is that he never really gets caught ball watching he mm. always knows where his man is as well as the danger and sometimes as a centre back not saying that I was one but you wasn't one <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be watching you, you know, for the ones that switched off yeah. though yeah, yeah. yeah. John Terry yeah. John Terry read the yeah. game superbly well like that didn't he he didn't have that much pace no. but he was so good at his positioning right and reading the game yeah. and being able to marshal players around and, him it sounds a lot like and that. that's exactly and you can see he's just growing into the Premier League which mm. is, is a plus for Liverpool going especially going into next season with the way it's looking how many possible games they could have do you um, know, Kels, I think that when Van Dijk comes, Van Dijk's one of those defenders who's a lot like Diaz, company, Ledley King. 
he makes players around him better. And I, I'd like to, a bit, I'd be fascinated to see if he could play alongside yeah. Van Dijk mm. and what Van Dijk could do for his game. Because Nat Phillips wasn't even in in the picture before mm. the injury, was he? And, and suddenly he's part of that squad. And you just hope when Van Dijk comes back and Gomez comes back and maybe Matip that he isn't farmed out on loan. Mm -hmm. and they give him a run of games because I think he's earned that now. When you see that footage, you see that he's starting to get the hang of being a Liverpool player. Yeah. And he's performing really well. And that, that partnership with Rhys Williams, because that's been the other concern, is that they haven't had a yeah, consistent centre-back pairing as, as well. But mm. when you look at, at Nat Phillips <coughs> and the way he, he plays, there's something very old-fashioned about the kind of... I mean, you talked about John <coughs> Terry. That's probably about as modern an incarnation of, of that type of defender as, as you would see. It feels like there's something really old-fashioned and kind of solid and mm. dependable about him rather than this skillful ball-playing yes. central defender. Yeah, that's sometimes what you need. It's yeah. all right having, like, one ball player. If you, even if you go back to times of Man United, you had your Rio, which did everything, football, pace, and he had the footballing brain, but then there was always an enforcer beside him. Same to a point at Chelsea, Arsenal back in the day. Is it, you always have to have a balance, and I think... He, he can give you that other side where you've got that hard man, per se, in the, at the back. You know, you, you say that, what he is, he's the no-nonsense. Yes. You, you don't yeah. feel... You, you look at someone like Nat Fritz, you don't feel like you have to drum, drum into him. Rose, just get it out of the danger area. He's not playing around with it. He's clearing his, he's clearing his lines. He's getting the job done. And that is what sometimes... That is exactly what you need. I just wonder if particularly with games, that you would say you'd like to see more of him next season, even when they do have Gomez and Matip and, and Van Dijk back. You'd like to see Nat Phillips. I wonder if games like that against Burnley are the ones where he can really shine, where you can get the best out of him, if that's where you need that kind of sensible head, who yeah. just is... And a physical presence as well. Well, yeah, and when, you, when you're looking at Burnley and the physical aspect of the Burnley side, and he dealt with that pretty well... Um, yesterday, whether it's Woods or whether it's in the opposing area with Tarkowski and, and Ben Mee, he dealt with that very, very easily. And you'd like to think that if Liverpool are playing, yes, Van Dijk's in there and he's got uh, his aerial presence, but then you look around and there's not too much more, like, aerial they can combat other teams with. You put him in there and it's a whole different ball game simply because not only is he very much attracted to the ball, but he's, he gets it out, he, he, he does his job, he gets it done. Right. Crunch time then. Fixtures to come. Mm. You've got Chelsea, who are taking on Aston Villa. They're away. Yeah. You've got uh, Leicester at home. You've got Liverpool at home to Crystal Palace on Sunday. What do we think is going to happen? And, and also, now, those, those home and away fixtures, it matters now because there's going to be fans oh, inside yeah. the ground. I think um, Leicester will beat Tottenham. Um, Liverpool will beat Crystal Palace. And I think that Aston Villa will beat Chelsea. So you see Liverpool and Leicester inside the top four and Chelsea missing out? Yeah, but do you know something? It just, I don't know why I said <laughs> did it. Like, did you have to say that about one of my teams? I yeah, I did, yeah, because, <laughs> because when we're looking at the goals that they're going to need and the goals that Chelsea miss, and Villa maybe with a finishing off the season and Jack Grealish and Ollie, Ollie Watt, and you can just see a Villa team causing them problems. You could see it just like you could see, um, like you mentioned, you don't know what Chelsea's coming. But one thing you know for sure is that Timo Werner will, will probably get offside a couple of times, maybe score a couple of goals, but he's still capable of assisting, but he will m maybe miss a couple of chances, which they can't afford, which they can't afford. Mm. For me, I think Chelsea Villa will be a draw. I think the reasons for me behind that is I think people like Jack and Watkins are trying to get into the England squad, and I think to play against an outfit like Chelsea and prove herself might nudge Southgate to the direction to say, Grealish, you're fit enough to come. Oli, we need to drag you with us. I think Liverpool are actually going to struggle against Crystal Palace because... With I, fans there, Sean. With fans there, me, Liverpool. It, for me, it's not about the fans. I just know, like, so the Burnley Don't game... Don't come to me. I want to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just back with a cup of tea. <laughs> the Burnley game, if you think of, they had chances to score, whereas I feel like Benteke won't miss some of those chances and neither will Zaha. And they're not always going to have three shots in a game and score three goals. That, that's, that's a rarity for me. And that's what Liverpool got away with against Burnley. So I think it'll be tougher than we think. And, and across the season, Liverpool's goal-scoring record and their, their finishing hasn't, hasn't been, been good. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah, but so. now we're talking about Liverpool going into a game, Sean, where 
they can cement their ch Champions League space. They've got the like, Champions League place. They've got their fans in there. You know what I mean? Palace, unfortunately, no Eze, which is d devastating for him. But like, and, and a Palace team that, yes, Roy Hodgson, this is his last game, is going to his old club. They might want to give him a send off. I just think there's too much in it for Liverpool to. to send. We saw the goalkeeper getting sent up, the, the kitchen sink thrown at it, and they did it. And they beat Burnley. Now they have to finish it off at home against Palace to get into Champions League. I cannot see them slipping up now. It just it, it's so unpredictable because mm. we're looking at teams, like you said, all those different factors that you mm. have to take into account. And then even with, with um, Aston Villa taking on Chelsea, you're thinking, well, yeah, they're going to be in front of a home crowd. And then Chelsea got one eye on the Champions mm. League final. Well, you know, do they, yeah. do, they, do they want to qualify? They, they know they've got a get it. They could try and beat Manchester City in the Champions League final. That's, I mean, it's probably going to be easier for them, to, you would argue, to beat Aston Villa than it is to beat Manchester City I, to qualify. I actually think... They can't, they've got to have both eyes on this. I, I don't think they can think about the Champions League final, largely because, um, A, they're up against such a good team, but his brief was to get them back into the Champions League, full stop. Mm. I think they, I, when they employed him, I didn't think, I don't think they felt they could win the Champions League, but I do think they felt they could get into the top four. So I think his brief will be to win this all in. And, but, both, both of you guys the rock, <laughs> have made me think because mm. that's such an interesting angle to it. There'll be England players in that Villa team who will have their last chance to impress Gareth Southgate before he names his squad on Tuesday. Ollie Watkins, Jack Grealish. They've got that threat. It's not as if they're up against... Chelsea are up against a side that are going to park the bus and worry about Chelsea's mm. attacking threat. They will provide their own attacking threat. But having said all of that... When I started the show, I thought Liverpool will beat Palace mm. easily. But Benteke, with his aerial ability, yes. 10 goals so far this season, eight in his last 11 mm. games, he is scoring goals now for fun, just as he signed a new contract. Against his old club? Against his old club. We're talking about the aerial ability of Nat Phillips, but they needed him on the line at the weekend because they still do have those frailties at mm. the back. Could Benteke, in Hodgson's last game, could it be written in the stars for that to happen? So, as you rightly say, there's so many things that could happen. The only thing I think that's guaranteed is that Leicester will beat Spurs. Yes, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree, agree with you. Yes, Darren, yeah. yes. You say that, no. but Tottenham wanted to make sure of their own European position. I don't know. And then you've got...